Welcome to the HCI Family of Podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Meredith Melberg, welcome to the conversation today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the Bay Area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about looking forward to Monday mornings. And I kind of chuckle when I think about this because I know how many people really have like the Sunday dreads and, you know, they, they've just had this nice weekend and now they're like, oh, I have to go back to work tomorrow. And I get that that's a reality for so many people. And I'm also, I, I, I figure I'm probably pretty darn fortunate that I don't feel that way. Like I'm excited about the work week starting. So I, I'm super excited to hear your thoughts on how we could foster that kind of a mindset and, a, and that kind of an experience uh, in our own work life and, and with the people we work with and the, and the work that we do. Um, any strategies, any mindset tricks, tips, um, things like that. That's what we'll be exploring together today. As we get started, I wanted to share Meredith's bio with everybody. Meredith Melberg is CEO of Meredith Melberg Group, an ICF certified master coach. She helps executives look forward to Monday mornings. For almost 20 years, she has walked alongside senior and high potential leaders to define their career priorities, measure the gap with their current opportunities, and close the space between the two. Clients grow their professional satisfaction, impact, and success, transforming their careers and leadership styles from the inside out. I love that. You're doing a really important work. Anything else, Meredith, you would like to highlight by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Sure. Uh, so I started my career as a recruiter. So I've had three phases. First phase was recruiter. Second was product management before becoming a coach now 20 years ago. And through that process, I became an expert translator between audiences, people who had jobs, people who wanted them, people who had uh, problems software could solve and people who could build those solutions. So I've become extraordinarily aware of sort of the dynamics of how change happens through communication in the workplace and how you communicate to yourself and how you communicate to others. And I put that into, uh, you know, after 20 years of work, I, I summed it all up in a book that I just wrote called Your Finest Work. And I'm looking forward to uh, sharing those lessons more broadly than folks that I can meet individually in coaching. I think putting your work into a book like this is is super important. Um, and it's a labor of love. It takes a lot of time and energy uh, to do that. And so maybe before we dive into the broader conversation, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about your why behind the book, um, and, th and then we can dig into really looking forward to Mondays. Sure. Uh, so what happened for me is as I, you know, as a product manager, I, I noticed patterns. That was, that was my training. And so as I have had thousands of coaching conversations, I started to notice that regardless of what question the person came to coaching with, regardless of their context, their level, their age, their stage of career, their field, uh, even if the, you know, the answers were all different, but the way to get to the answers I found were the same. And how I knew that is that in every coaching conversation, I was drawing the same diagram. And the diagram was a set of pillars, like on a graph. And then I was proceeding to use a framework that was co constant, regardless of the situation. And that's what clued me into the fact that people make transformation in their career and how they lead too hard, that actually it really boils down to what I ended up realizing is seven behavior patterns that get in your way. And you may be stumbling with some or all of them, um, more, more likely just a few. And if you make some subtle tweaks, things really hum. And so that's what I wanted to share with a larger uh, larger population. You know, I've learned some pretty significant lessons to help lessen the curve for other people endeavoring to change their lives through the satisfaction, fulfillment, meaning, and impact they get from their career. So I'm curious, what do you see as some of the biggest reasons why people dread 
going back to work on Mondays. <laughs> I mentioned, sure. I mentioned the sun, the Sunday blues and there's it's different Sunday terms blues. for this, but, but, but everyone gets it. Like everyone has experienced that where you're just like, you get to Sunday afternoon and you're like, Oh, I, I have to start going back. And, and it can really suck the life even out of that last half a day that you have to still do stuff and to still re-energize yourself and to spend time with loved ones. Um, it, it can put a damper on all of that. If you're just dreading going back to work the next day. For sure. For sure. Especially now, like, you know, Captain Obvious, look at what's going on around us. You know, I, I, one of the um, futurists that I follow, uh, and he actually wrote the forward for my book, he's become a friend, but he ha he talks about how the 20, the, the 2020s, this decade is the most disruptive in human history, that more is changing this 10 year period than ever before in the history of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, beyond sort of that Sunday blues that, you know, a lot of people have, we've got this swirl around us of disruption, the pandemic just being the first of them, and that many more are in process. We're seeing it with AI, with the wars, you know, the what's going on in the political scene. And what he talks about is it's the collapse of 20th century institutions and thinking and the onset of 21st century uh, thinking and institutions. And that by 2030, life is going to look quite different. And so we have to go through this sort of chaos and disruption. And that what, um, you know, what I've learned is that in those moments of disruption and chaos around us, steadiness has to come from within. And so often when you get the Sunday blues, it's because it feels like your career is kind of happening to you, that you're not in control of it. And so um, in control can, can refer to, you know, you might be doing good work for your organization, for the employees that work for you, the stakeholders that you please, your, your, your customers, et cetera. But it's often at the expense of your own career um, sense of, of meaning, you know, fulfillment, that it's really working for you. You might feel exhausted, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, you know, the playbook, the, the modern playbook that you need to adapt, especially in turbulent times where steadiness comes with from within is to figure out how to shift those dynamics, to feel more in control, to feel more clear on what it is that you're here to do with this work. What, what is the delight in this chapter for you and how can you do it with energy and enthusiasm with practices that help you restore your, your energy, not only on the job, but on the weekend and on your off time from work. It is a rather uh, challenging time, shall we say, you know, politically, socially, um, technologically uh the the world of work is shifting our personal lives are are hectic and in challenging lots of strained relationships like you you start to to stack all of those things on top of each other and it's no wonder that people are just like desperate for a reprieve and and uh really sad when they when their short reprieve is uh slipping away <laughs> you know their weekend right. is almost over and now it's time to go yeah. back yeah. um so i i love that i, I you know that we, we can start to shift the way we approach um, really not just Sundays, you know, as you're starting to go back to work, but really shifting your approach to how you, you view your career, your work overall, your priorities and values in relation to work and the balance and integration with family life, community life, et cetera. Um, what, what have you found to be some of those things that people can start to do uh, to shift their mindsets, to to get into a better space uh, where they can fully leverage the the downtime that they do have, um, so that they are replenished and re-energized to go back to work and and to really go all in and and do great things. Yes, there's a number of different strategies, but there's a couple that come to mind just off the bat. One is to, um, especially if you are falling into the trap that I call. Um, on everybody else's agenda, but your own. So in other words, you know, you're at work and you're just doing, you're, you're taking care of the fire in front of you. It's like, what's, who's shouting loudest, that kind of thing that can be very draining. Uh, the antidote, the, you know, the strategy to combat that is to get clear on your North Star, to define it. And so by your North Star, I mean, what is this chapter of your career bringing you? What do you want and need from it? And, and thinking also into your future, your future phases of your career. That is very solidifying. It gives you a horizon line to focus on to uh, complement what everybody else is needing and asking from you. So whether, you know, if you're thinking about doing this on a weekend or carving out some time during your week, the idea would be to take a set of reflective questions that help you connect with what is really important to you in your career. What do you want it 
to do for you? How do you want it to feel? What do you want to be spending your time doing? What values do you want it to honor for you? What purpose do you want to serve? What business problem do you want to solve? How, how do you want to be rewarded and recognized for your good work? So having a foundation of what I call non-negotiables, which is what you skinny mm -hmm. that North Star down to, and then measures of success for how you will uh, recognize that those non-negotiables are being met becomes a rubric against which you can navigate your work days and your, you know, your work choices about whether you stay or move on from where you are or advance where you are, et cetera, to make sure that you are fulfilling as many of those attributes as possible. And doing that reflective work allows you to solidify in yourself um, how to hold um, the tension between what others want from you and what you want from yourself and to find that happy medium, that overlay between the two. So you're really working at increasing your sense of clarity of what, what this career phase is bringing you, what you want from it, and how you will prioritize your time. That gives you a sense of increasing clarity and it helps with control. The other piece I would talk about is this idea of many people, especially now, are doing what I call, they're falling in the trap of running on empty, trying mm -hmm. to make career and leadership transformation happen for themselves and for their organizations with just no fuel in the tank. Like there's just not more time in the day, you know, whether, you know, I've had people who have come to me that have had un undiagnosed depression, for example, or just adrenals being shot. That was my case when I changed my career into coaching. I was just... I was just depleted physically, you know, this idea of no creativity, not feeling like you can take one more step, filling the tank is an important aspect of that. So you can increase your sense of stamina and how that works is to both uh, take care of yourself outside of work and do the things that, you know, are restorative for you, uh, whether that's um, replenishing, you know, your energy through uh, well-being practices and exercise and good eating, all the things we know are good for us, but also, you know, picking up a hobby that you've let by the wayside or, you know, if, you know, engaging in a fulfilling activity or even just binging on your latest Netflix obsession. There's lots of different ways to do it. But at work, filling your tank and replenishing your energy looks like making things take less, you know, renegotiating uh, deadlines and boundaries and charters and um, having the, you know, if you are a leader of others, having the people who work for you take more responsibility for getting what they need from you, you know, even in things like your one-on-one -on -one sessions, shifting uh, the dynamic from you doing everything, which is often a playbook that, that leaders come into management with and they need to shed because that's how they became awesome as individ individual contributors, but it doesn't work when you're a leader of others. So there's a variety of ways to do it, but we're trying to increase your sense of stamina and that gives you more energy for the work, the truly important work that needs to be done in your job and with your career. You've mentioned several times now clarity. Um, really honing in on your values, your priorities, to have that clarity around your career goals and ambitions uh, and what that means for where you're currently at and where you want to go. Uh, recognizing, too, that sometimes we are very susceptible to adopting the priorities and values of those around us or what we feel like society expects of us mm -hmm. and they don't actually align with what we need, what we want um, and what would be best for us. Um, that's a hard thing to disentangle. Sometimes uh, it takes a lot of self-reflective work and a lot of attentionality and, um, and, and, and really mindfulness work uh, to be able to fully parse that out. And it's hard because you don't know what you don't know. And so if you just kind of feel like, no, this is my priority, but you don't recognize that there's some deeper seated you know, something else going on below that, you're, you're never going to know that until you get to the point of like burnout uh, in some or some sort of catastrophe that you're trying to re resolve um, or you do the work to, to try to, to better understand it. And you mentioned the pandemic, the, the pandemic for all the challenges and negative outcomes that came from the pandemic for a lot of people, one of the positive things from the pandemic was it kind of forced people to take a step back, to reevaluate, uh, to to check in on their values and their priorities, um, and within the workplace, it, it it required leaders to reevaluate the status quo. Like, why do we do things the way we do them? Do we still need to do them that way, or, or are we just doing it because that's tradition? Because that's how it's always been done. Um, 
those types of uh, conversations and and uh, self reflections can be time consuming. Uh, they can it takes a lot of intentionality, but they're super, super important. And let's not wait until the next pandemic to, <laughs> to, to make sure that we kind of see where we're at um, so that we can make the choices that are going to be the healthiest for us. Yes, that, that makes complete sense. I mean, there are some, there is some upside from all of this chaos that we're, you know, we're experiencing. It's helping us get connected with what is most important uh, in our lives, in our communities and what we want for, you know, want, want to be able to look back at the end of our, our lives and say, here's what we did. Here was our part to play. Um, and you're right that there's sort of lots of disruption happening and, you know, gosh, we're not going to keep doing things because that's the way we've always done it. I mean, we're certainly seeing that with AI and it's, you know, overriding, like how, how does business get done? All of these reductions in force and just that you're seeing it, like, it's very encouraging. I, I find to take that futurist view of go up to 10,000 foot and just see, oh, this is the dynamic that's happening. This all feels so, so difficult, but what it is, is it's leading us to, you know, a streamlined 21st century way of doing business, of doing life, of being human. And so, you know, we have to take extra good care of ourselves. We're asking a lot of ourselves as we navigate that, but it's all, it's actually, you know, in many ways, very exciting. Uh, so, you know, how, how do you, how do you attach to that inspi inspiring place as opposed to, oh my gosh, this is just the latest thing in the set of hard things that we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's, um, in, we just have a few minutes left, but sure. as we start to wrap things up, um, if you were to recommend, you know, one, two, maybe three things at the most of like what listeners can start to do right now to do that mental reset, to, to, to recalibrate in a way that will allow them to be, you know, to utilize their downtime better and to really go back invigorated, ready to tackle the challenges that are facing them when they start their work week. Okay. Well, the first thing I would say is just to notice, like to build a sense of observation going through your day. What are the things that are draining you and what are the things that are energizing to you? So like if you are exhausted by the idea of, oh, let me sit down and do like a full reflection in terms of what's important to me, just start to put your your lens of observation on and notice where there are opportunities to lean into more of that's energizing and to lean out of things that aren't. And for things that aren't as energizing, get creative about how that can be done in a way that's e either less draining to you or that you don't have to do it. Like I'm doing a little bit of magical thinking as I talk about that, but there's, there's quite, um, there, there's quite a lot of power in sort of taking control of the situation instead of saying, Hey, uh, this is happening to me. I, I, I don't have control over it. It's like, how can I steer the ship in directions that give me even in the moment, more, more pleasure, more delight, more sense of, of meaning and fulfillment and less drudgery and sense of drain. So some things might be able to be prioritized off your plate, get off that board that's been draining you, you know, for example, um, you know, um, cut, cut the scope of that project, you know, decrease the, the, um, the, the number of times you go out in the evening during the week, if you need more restorative time, what are the things that you can just notice and observe? So fine tune that observation lens. The second thing is to take what I call imperfect action. It's really easy in your career and in your leadership to get fixated on doing things right, not wanting to make a mistake. Sometimes it comes through the lens of like, oh, I want the optics to be right, or I only have one chance to get this right. Let's say you're reaching out to someone in a position of influence. So taking imperfect action is the antidote, and that increases your sense of nimbleness. Uh, one way to do that is uh, a process I call CLEAR, C-L-E-A-R. Uh, and that's a repeatable process for any problem or question you're sitting with. And that has to do with kind of increasing the velocity of your decision and action taking to reduce the stakes and the amount of effort you put into something. So, you know, clarify the problem that you're trying to solve. That's C. Figure out how you will know you've solved it well. Where are you starting from? Where are you ending? Uh, learn what the options are. Take a look at some, you know, brainstorm some things. Evaluate those options. Make the best decision in the moment based on what you know. Take action and then refine your results, you know, get feedback and continue to evolve. So things you can do to reduce the effort to get things done 
Um, quick and dirty drafts are a, a really great way to do that. If you're writing a performance review, for example, instead of exhaustively going through all the past data to figure out what to write about one of your employees, just sit down, get quiet and think about them and write down what did they do well, what do they need to improve and move on to the next employee. At the end of that process, only then go back and look and cross check the data to make sure you've caught everything. That helps you trust your intuition, reduces the amount of effort you put into things. And more often than not, you are going to capture all the important things. And that's a process you can apply to multiple types of business scenarios. Well, Meredith, this has just been a great conversation. Again, I know at the time I need to let you go, but before we wrap things up, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Terrific. Well, the best way to get in touch with me is to go to my uh, Your Finest Work book website. There you can get links to go take a look at the book and, and purchase it if you'd like, but also you can download some free tools, including a self-assessment. It allows you to figure out which of these seven pillars you're not prioritizing uh, and adequately invested in might, and some quick actions to take to focus your efforts to have more of what you want and less of what you don't in your career and in your leadership. Um, the last thing I'll say is that people make it too hard to transform their situation. <laughs> I mean, that's welcome news in a, in a world that's disrupted. And so I invite you to, you know, to, to reframe how you're thinking about what your version of your finest work is and to lean into some simple strategies that allow you to have more of what you want. And, and uh, the work that I've done can help you get started with that. So thank you um, for having me, John, and um, for allowing me to share with your audience. Thank you. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Meredith can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We hope you stay healthy and safe and please join us again soon.